Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411. And today we have changed it up. Of course. We really need to stop saying what we're going to do. And we say that every time. And then we turn around and do it anyway. Because we get so but, excited for what we're going to do. And then timing doesn't work. Well, there is way more to Jimmy Lee Holt than I think either. I know that we knew this. But when we looked up the written stuff about him, it was like, eh, okay. It's and then, like four paragraphs. Right. And logistically, he was only there for like a couple years. So we're like, okay, what else could there be? And it was a really long time. So it makes sense if the write-up's not the best. Right. Well... We kind of want to watch him and figure all this out because there seems to be... I it seems scared. to be fun. I'm scared, though, because this is going to put us down so many rabbit holes of all the old storylines. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm not ready. One of the rabbit holes that caught my eye was the doorway on Kelly's Diner used to be right across. So, like, if you're looking at the counter, you know how we get that side view of the counter? Yeah. You're looking at the counter. That was the door up against the wall. Uh-huh. That's kind of where I got the idea for us to do talk about Kelly's Diner today. Oh, that's crazy. No, I never because, knew that. Yeah, we're talking about the quarter main mansion like doors where moving around. Door is now? Yeah. So it's not the door that they all come through all the time now. Right, but there's that like side one that people have sneaked out. If I guess. Going, yeah, the, it looks like they're going upstairs. Yes. Like you would think that that was the apartment right, 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 entrance. Right. Yeah, no, that was the main doors. Oh. Yeah. Huh. You'll you'll notice it now whenever you I go. will. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. Uh-huh. We're really crunched on time this week, even though Amanda's kids are, well, they only just got picked they up to go. They just left like two hours ago. So, And my being sick for the weekend really did not help me because I tried to watch Jimmy Lee Holt. And then I was like, I actually want to pay attention to this. So at least you have an excuse. I didn't really try. I had Em's know. party and I was M's all party. about that. So you had Em's party and then you had something for your sister's birthday on mm -hmm. Sunday, right? So mm -hmm. you had stuff. I did. Yeah. I was having fun instead of watching old stuff. So well, that's where we were at. But now I have all kinds of time. Exactly. Well, not all kinds, but yes. We are going to talk about Jimmy the whole eventually. But today, we've changed it to Kelly's Diner. Because we do talk about it a lot. All the time. All the time. It, it's central to Port Charles. So we are using General Hospital Fandom. And we are using the Travel Guide to Port Charles by Lucy Co. It's actually not by Lucy. Well, I mean, it's written in Lucy's voice, but... Looks like it was just written by ABC, but it's supposed to be written by Lucy Co. Cause that's what it says on here. Yep. Yep. Okay. So what do you, let's, let's do this first. Cause I, you know what my favorite memories of, of Kelly's are, you know what it is. First of all, you can't think of Kelly's without thinking of crazy Heather Weber and her BLTs. And then my, all of my favorite scenes would be the Jagger and Karen stuff. And they got married at Kelly's. Come on. Yes. So what do you think? We literally besides... only decided on this like an hour ago, guys. So <laughs> those are my favorite memories. What are your favorite memories? I just remember Lucky and Liz. Mm -hmm. That's what I just always think of is because that's where. And Aunt Ruby always giving out all the good advice yes. to everyone. Yes. I miss Aunt Ruby. Yes. So we're going to talk about her today, though, which is probably also going to take us. Oh, There's no. There's a lot of her in Jimmy Lee Holt. And I'm oh, just sitting no. there. I think in the back of my mind, it was it was subconsciously just saying, Shannon, do Kelly's Diner first. Okay. So we will. So as always, if there is somehow something that we're missing, obviously this is a location. So there's always something we're going to miss. But if you have a favorite memory of Kelly's Diner, a favorite scene that's taken place there, please let us know. We would love to share it with, because it's just one of those, it's its own character. Kelly's Diner is a character in On General Hospital. Yes. It absolutely is. But did you know that Kelly's was introduced in 1980? No, that means it's the same age as I am. That's so cute. And it's only a little older than me. As a waterfront diner that also features boarding rooms upstairs. Founded originally by Patty Kelly and his wife, Rose. Oh. I had no idea. Me neither. This is how dumb we are. <laughs> <laughs> but that explains why the name Kelly's instead of Ruby. Right. Yes. And Kelly's quickly became a popular meeting place for the people of Port Charles. So quick side note, Patty Kelly was played by Frank Parker and... 
He ran it with his wife, Rose, and after he got involved with Frank Smith and the mob, he was stabbed. He was only on the show from 1979 to 1980, though. Oh, wow. In the hospital, he identified Vic Gower as the man who stabbed him. He was told that Vic was found dead, and Patty soon passed away from the injuries. Aww. And then his wife, Rose, I keep seeing in all of the Jimmy Lee Holt stuff. Mm-hmm. And she was a fictional character from General Hospital. Louie Bishop originated the role in 1980 and left in 84 after being unhappy with her lack of storylines. Aww. She was nominated for a daytime Emmy. Cool. In 1984, the year that she decided to leave. That's funny. That's ironic. And Rose and her husband, Patty, are the original owners of Kelly's Diner in Port Charles. They get involved with Frank Smith and his mob dealings. See, now Patty said that he did. Her says they did. Yeah. And Patty is killed by the mob. Rose is the stepmother of Patty's son, Joe Kelly, and becomes the foster mother of Lou Swenson. She later gets involved with Hutch and Jake Meyer. Lou Swenson is the girl that Jack or Black was like trying to protect, not to get into Jimmy Lee Holt, but he kept calling her Lulu. And I'm like, wait, is this how we got? I mean, I know it's Leslie Lou, but yeah. You know, I don't know. Are we going to get sidetracked onto no. Lou and then be, find out that that's partly whatever? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so many spider webs. Yes. Uh, not long after opening, Rose hired Luke Spencer as a waiter for the diner. Some years after Patty was killed during an incident with the mob, Rose left town to be with her stepson and sold Kelly's to Ruby. There you go. Yep. Who became known for her sage, sage advice, advice. <laughs> and her famous chili. Aww. In 1984, the bankrupt Quartermains took residence at Kelly's, much to Edward's dismay, also going to be talked about in Jimmy Lee Holt. Right. While working and living at the diner, Lila Quartermain creates a new business called Pickle Lila to build the Quartermains' fortune back. In 1990, Kelly's received a slight makeover and was updated with the red neon sign in the window while the entrance was moved to the east side of the diner. <laughs> Well, I feel better that it happened in 1990, though, because I would have been too young to notice that. Right. I wasn't paying that good of attention then. Oh, yay. In 1992, Jagger Cates and some other gang members broke into Kelly's and roughed up Ruby. Ruby later forgave Jagger for his part in the robbery and even helped him get back on his feet by offering him the room above Kelly's and a job. I didn't know that he beat up Ruby. Yeah, remember? Why do you like him so much then? No. How do you beat up Ruby? No. Stop. Don't talk about Jagger that way. <laughs> I will fix this in your mind. Hold okay. on. Okay. Him and two of his buddies were going to rob rubies. Okay. okay. Jagger did not know that one of the other bad guys had a gun. And when Ruby said, no, 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 I will not give you my money. This guy pulled out his gun and ended up shooting her. <gasps> And Jagger stayed behind and made sure that she was okay. Or I think Jagger may have taken the bullet for her, like, Aww. like blocked it. I would have to rewatch. I know that I talked about it at some point in time where I thought. I don't know. Re- I do not no? remember this now. No, maybe I watched it when we were getting ready to interview yeah. Carrie. Okay. Yeah. So, but anyway, and then, um, Jagger was in the hospital. Okay. Yeah, so Jagger must have got caught, must have got shot instead of Ruby. So that was why Ruby forgave him was because he wasn't one of the thugs that just ran off. He took the bullet for her and like wasn't trying to be mean. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Don't, I don't might, talk I bad might, about my Jagger. I'm I gonna, might just have gonna, to go down the rabbit hole and watch it up Jagger and to make sure that so that I, I can understand right. all of this. Because I don't like you talking smack on my I Jagger. Didn't, okay? I didn't. I didn't. You almost just said Mick Jagger. No, <laughs> my you Jagger. No, I didn't. Because I would never say Mick Jagger. But I didn't know that. So yes. Okay. He's not, he just needed some money. Poor Jagger. Don't talk bad about him. I won't. I just didn't know that he did that. Anyway. Okay. Ruby also grants Jagger and Karen Wexler permission to hold their wedding at Kelly's. I did watch that. When many, where many poor Charles guests attended. Can't read because I'm just so excited by <laughs> all of it talking about them. I love them. Are you going to have me keep going? Because that was yeah. the best sentence ever. Being a family owned business, Ruby often allowed Lucky Spencer to host private Kelly closed diners with Nicholas Cassadine, Emily Quartermain, and Elizabeth Weber, which consisted of a traditional pot- potluck dinner. I didn't know that those were like planned ahead. It's just not right. like they'd walk in I, and be like, we're shutting the place down. Exactly. I thought it was more of a, hey, let's go to Kelly's after hours. We'll throw some 20s on the table and just eat whatever's in the fridge and make up our own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I did not think that was a planned 
I'd like to talk and ask if that was true because I don't think that's the way it went well, down. Well, if we have to sit down and talk to Jonathan Jackson, Rebecca Herb, <laughs> Amber Tamblin, and Tyler Christopher just to get an answer to this, I then think that's so my first it. question if we ever interview any of them. Did you think that that was planned? <laughs> no. Okay, okay. So we're on the same date. When Ruby passed away in 1999, she left Kelly's in the hands of her niece and nephew, Luke and Bobby Spencer. Luke found it especially difficult to keep Kelly's afloat without Ruby. Yeah. Mm. Not long after Ruby's death, Luke and Bobby turned over daily operations to Tammy Henson, who ran Kelly's until leaving town sometime in 2001. And this is when Mike was dating Tammy. Mm -hmm. And so that's why when we were just talking about Georgie, Mike was in charge saying to Georgie, you're our best server and Bobby just needs Maxie here for the summer. Right. No, Lulu here for the summer. Sorry. You were on the we were on I the know. same page. Yes. <laughs> we do that a lot. Over the years, the only thing that stinks about that though is when we listen back to this and then we're like, we know what we were talking about. Yep. They're all like, man, they're dumb. Do they even like this show? <laughs> Actually, that's one thing that we get the most compliments on is that the way that we talk about the show, we're obviously fans and not like, I guess the way we've all seen stuff on social media that you're like, then why do you watch? Right. Like if you, if you're just going to complain about everything, granted, we go on our tirades. Absolutely. But why do you watch if you it always only complain about, about it? Stuff. Even the stuff that we're complaining about, we're calling them out on the fact that it's not following the sequence that right. they have shown us. And we don't expect every, I mean, yeah, no, that's just, we could just have a whole other conversation about that. Yes. Okay. Over the years, Luke and Bobby juggled the manager position themselves, also allowing numerous Port Charles citizens to work and live above Kelly's. On New Year's Eve 2002, Carly Corinthos and Rick Lansing discover the remnants of a 1920s speakeasy called the Flynn's Club, breaked off in the basement of Kelly's. And that's where Georgie and Dylan went to last week. Well, yeah, you know. <laughs> Carly later ran a club here for a few years and named it The Cellar, which we should now we have to do line. that. Stop. Go ahead. In February of 2004, Luke and Bobby hired Mike Corbin to run and live above Kelly's. Oh, no. That would have been when Georgie was there. No. That is the Tammy that was dating Mike, right? I thought so. Maybe that's how they met. I don't know. Because he was taking over as No, because Tammy didn't leave and Tammy left in 2001. Oh, 2001. He did date t- someone named Tammy. Maybe it's the wrong Tammy that I'm thinking of. Maybe. Who's this other Tammy? Hold on. Look this up. We need. I need to see if I'm wrong. Oh, no. Her relationship with Mike, presence in Kelly's, and very existence are just a memory now. She vanished in early 2001 without explanation. Okay. All right. So that is the same Tammy, but I guess that's not when Mike was running it. Guess not. Okay. This is how mem- memories smush. <laughs> Mm-mm-mm. Mike became known for giving his advice, much like in the way of Ruby, and his chocolate chip cookies. Mm-hmm. Oh, why didn't they have Mike making chocolate chip cookies as part of know, his that, Alzheimer's? That should be part of our recipe. Yeah. Guys, we need this cookbook. Ruby's chili, Mike's chocolate chip cookies, sunny sauce. Are you going to do pickle Lila too? Pickle Lila, pickle Tracy, <laughs> the BLT. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't Jason make grilled cheese for Sam? I think so. Okay. All right. So some months after taking over Kelly's, Mike was attacked outside the diner by two thugs attempting to send a message to his son, Sonny. Mike was quickly rescued by Sam McCall back when she was awesome. <laughs> Seriously, we can be doing better here, guys. Who turned, who in turn was attacked instead? Sam was later saved by Ed, Emily Quartermain, who held the thugs at gunpoint. You go, Emily. Yes. Mike has also hired a variety of Port Charles citizens. When the Russian mob invaded Port Charles in 2008, two mobsters break into Kelly's, assault Mike, and then set the place ablaze, fueling a mob war involving Sonny Corinthos. Not long after Mike recovered, Bobby and Luke quickly made plans to rebuild the diner. In 2010, Mike leaves Kelly's to go to gambling rehab, forcing Luke to once again step in his manager. See, that's where I remember him with Tammy because he was having his gambling problem Mm -hmm. and she was there. Yes. But if she left in 2001 and didn't come back, then how am I remembering that like that? I don't know. Okay. Do you remember? Okay. Okay. Yeah, because there was like conversation about if she was good for him or not. Right. Yes. See, I'm not making that up. It's there. We should probably do Mike being that he passed away. Mm-hmm. Oh, shoot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Too many ideas here. So when Mike left to go to rehab, it once again forced Luke to step in as acting manager. Luke often employs his daughter, Lulu, to help the family business with Lulu showing little interest. She was destined to be a writer. That's how she learned about bad cheese. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, I wish she would she put took that her in her experience article. to the street. There you go. Oh my gosh, that's funny. In February 2012, Sean Butler was hired as the new manager. It does not feel like it was that long ago. No, it doesn't. That was almost 10 years ago. Oh my gosh. No, don't round up to 10. That's the year that Madeline was born. Stop. Okay. okay. Stop. Okay. Oh, but that's the year that we met. Okay. Not long after taking over, Sean found TJ Ashford breaking into Kelly's and stealing food. He then took TJ under his wing and gave him a job and a room at the diner. That seems weird. And he was in high school. Of TJ breaking in somewhere because he is such a goody goody. Right. Later that year, he was a good kid. Still, he was just he, that was well, necessity. I mean, right. he was that hungry, was necessity. I, yeah, it's just he was Jean Valjeaning it, now. not like thugging it. Right. <laughs> Later that year, Luke was especially displeased when Heather Weber was released from Ferncliff and forced Luke to employ her at Kelly's, where she was known for expressing her fondness of the BLT sandwiches. I feel like that wasn't the beginning. Everyone knew she loved BLTs before that. Yeah. However, this was short-lived. Heather proved to still be mentally unstable. Oh, that was a nice way of putting it. (laughs) As of 2013, it seems Kelly has been given a makeover with new neon lights and green paint. After Sean was sentenced to jail in 2015, it became unclear as who now manages Kelly. In 2016, Kelly's had an attempted armed robbery. This time, the culprit was subdued by Curtis and Jordan Ashford. Who was running it, though? The, the sentence but you just I, I read know, that they like, don't know. Was there when that happened. I don't I know. Remember. Countless fights have occurred at Kelly's. Some of these included Elizabeth Weber, Courtney Matthews, Faith Roscoe, Carly Benson, Reese Marshall, Sky Quartermain, Lulu Spencer, Maxie Jones, Logan Hayes, Dylan Quartermain, Cooper Barrett and Lucky Spencer. Why do I feel like everyone from Lulu on were all involved in the same yes. fight? Though? Yes. So we have to look up those fights. And I feel like Elizabeth and Courtney were... Were they the two fighting? I feel like they would have been. Because remember, that was where a lot of the conversations about Elizabeth being the surrogate for Courtney oh, and Jax. Oh, yeah. And then Jax won in custody. Yeah. Happened. I, I don't know if to, they mean fight like actual physical or just like throw in something. We're just going to have to look. We'll have to watch it all. Now, wouldn't it be awesome if when Sean gets out of jail, he gets to go back to being the manager of Kelly's? He absolutely should, especially since we still don't know who's currently managing it. Exactly. So Ruby's was known for starting a trend of letting many citizens live and work at Kelly's. Some of these including, like some of these including and after her death, Diego Alcazar, Brenda Barrett, Cooper Barrett. Carly Benson. Okay, Brenda did not really work there. She didn't. <laughs> she did not. She had a job there, but I'm pretty sure most of the time I think she just she sat at the up counter. like one or two bottles and threw them away. She did not actually <laughs> work there, but okay. Carly Benson. I'm not sure how much she worked either, but okay. And then Jagger Case, and he did work. He yes. worked. He should have worked shirtless. Mm. Anyway, Mike Corbin, Lily Corinthos. I don't remember that. I don't either. Jimmy Lee Holt, Felicia Jones, Georgie Jones, Maxie Jones, Rick Lansing, Courtney Matthews. Where did Matthews. Rick work there? I don't remember Rick or Courtney. Oh, I think I, I remember do Courtney. remember. No, I do remember, I remember Rick. Courtney. No, I do remember Rick. There's a whole other one that we can do. You want to finish up? Sam McCall, Miguel Morez, Jason Morgan, Dylan Quartermain, Emily Quartermain, Juan Santiago, Rebecca Shaw. By the way, two of those people both played by Natasha Livingston. Though. Mm-hmm. Bobby Spencer... I feel like the Spencers don't even need to be listed, but okay. Bobby Spencer, Lucky Spencer, Luke Spencer, Lulu Spencer, Holly Sutton, Keisha Ward, Elizabeth Weber, and Karen Wexler. <sighs> so many awesome people. But then in the travel guide to Port Charles, it says, when you come to Port Charles, you better come hungry. Your mouth will water and your cup runneth over at the abundance of dining options. Sample fine fare from surf to turf, exceptional locally sourced entrees in a world's worth of international cuisine. Whether you're looking for a quick bite, a family style meal, or an upscale dining establishment, Port Charles has a little something for everybody. And then it talks about Kelly's Diner and says that Kelly's is the ultimate greasy spoon that also has some rooms to rent upstairs. Known originally for Patty and Rose Kelly's hearty Irish breakfasts. Oh. Oh. Kelly's developed a second round reputation courtesy of its next owner, Ruby Anderson. Her famous chili satisfies famished parents the county over as the younger set clambers for chocolate pancakes. But don't take my word for it. Just read the reviews. Oh my gosh. Now I want to go to Kelly's and get some chocolate pancakes. Seriously. Says Lulu F. This is where the discomforted come for comfort eats. Kelly's hash browns are the cure for almost anything. I admit to having a sentimental attachment to the place. 
Ruby and my Aunt Bobby charted my height on the wall at the second floor landing. Oh. Every now and then, my dad and I would meet at Kelly's for coffee before opening up the Haunted Star. And every now and then, I'd catch him at the second floor landing with a glint in his eye. So much for tough guy Luke Spencer. That's so cute. They should, like, actually bring that into the storyline. I know. You know what I wish that they had done here? Who were the boarders? Yeah. Who lived there? Really All right. So then the next one is from But Counter Spencer C. Pedestrian fare and rude service. I asked for cashew milk in my hot chocolate and received a laugh and a pat on my head. Hard pass. <laughs> Says Liz W. I used to work at Kelly's, so I may be a bit biased. Among their many delicacies is a strawberry milkshake that tastes as though it was pureed right off the vine. Ask for yours with a shot of chocolate sauce Ooh. to really tingle the taste buds. Yum. Oh, read the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Says Heather W. Get the BLT. <laughs> but yeah, so that, I wish that they had put who lived there though. So let's see if we can remember who, who we know live there. I, I'm going to assume that Patty and Rose may have. I feel like it's probably a saving grace that they didn't because that would give us like a thousand more people to well, talk about. Could we perhaps assume that all of these people who used to work there? So I think that Diego did. We just talked about that. Mm -hmm. Brenda, Brenda did. did. Cooper, Cooper did. did. Carly, Carly did. did. Jagger did. Carly also lived above the bar. Mm hmm. Jagger did. Mm hmm. Mike did. Mm hmm. Lily? I don't, I don't know. Lily, though. I don't know if Jimmy Lee did. We'll find that out in our Felicia, possibly. Maybe. I don't know. We know Georgie did because they were forced to get jobs there after she and Dylan got married. Right. Maxie? Probably. I feel like she might have. Mm. I know that Rick did. Yeah. Maybe that's why you don't remember him working there. Yeah. You just remember him living there. Maybe. Wait, did we read this wrong? Does it say? No, it says, oh, it does. Ruby was known for starting the trend of letting many citizens live and work. Oh, okay. So, but it's the heading says former employees, which is, it does. Fair. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's where that was confusing. So Sam did. Miguel did. Jason lived there. I thought he also lived above the mm. bar. I remember him going to see Brenda there, right? But I didn't think he lived there. I don't know. Dylan, we know, lived there. Emily? Maybe? I think I remember Juan. Lucky did. I don't know if Lulu did. Did Holly? I don't remember Holly, but I don't know. And I don't remember Keisha either, but it seems like... Keisha probably worked there. Right. Liz lived and worked there. Mm -hmm. And Karen lived there. Mm -hmm. So, okay, cool. Or Karen went to visit Jagger there. I don't know that she ever had her own place because she lived with did her she mom. Did she have a drawer? If she had a drawer, then it's living. If sure. she has a drawer, then she's I don't living. know. Guys tend to think that. Really? Oh, you want to get serious? Haven't you ever watched TV? Here, you can have a drawer. Oh, It's okay. always like the big step up and guys are like, or girls are like, great, thanks. Whole drawer just for myself. But this was so much fun. It was so much fun. I love, I just want to go to Kelly's. I want like I an know. actual Kelly's. I want to go get a BLT and some chocolate chip pancakes. Listen, guys, we coffee. just want to create a Port Charles theme park. Seriously be so fun. I really think that people would come. Go to our GoFundMe at it's not set up yet. <laughs> com. Exactly. Yeah. Just, I guess, share the podcast with your fellow general hospital fans, current and past. We've definitely had a lot of people say, I haven't watched the show in years, but they still enjoy listening to our like recaps and everything like right. that, especially whenever we do our deep dives. So the 411, but this was fun. This I'm, was fun. I'm bummed that we were not prepared to do Jimmy Lee Holt yet, but this was fun. It was. And if I, you're listening three years from now this week, we were supposed to talk about Jimmy Lee Holt <laughs> and three years from now, we may or may not have still done it. We will do it. <laughs> we will do it. We're just we going to give it all the time that it needs. We will. Exactly. And the same thing with Alan. We need to be, we don't do things halfway. Right. So. Yes. So I guess that is it. So please share with us your favorite memory of Kelly's, your favorite anything that happened there. And join us on Monday as we recap this week's shows. Have a good weekend. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com.